Here are some quick gameplay impressions on Songbringer, and this video is sort of an addendum to all of my end of the year 2017 stuff. I kind of got a code for Songbringer a little bit late, so I wasn't able to incorporate it in the stuff I was posting. So this is kind of a make good on that. So for those that don't know, this game launched for PC platforms and Xbox One on September 1st and PS4 on September 5th. Basically, it's a cyberpunk version of Zelda, essentially. You crash land on this planet, very forced but there's mysterious caves underneath everything and there's this weird horned beast man that's kind of uh, dictating movements and saying mysterious stuff and you find some other NPCs as well that kind of are a little bit cryptic on what's going on and like Zelda you find a cave and a sword or <laughs> you find a sword and a cave that'd be an amazing game if you found a cave and a sword I guess that's kind of like Disgaea anyway the big difference with this game is it's randomly generated it has the same exact layout pretty much for their dungeons, but the overall is kind of twisted around. Essentially, you type in a code in the beginning that translates a world seed, as it's called. And it depends on the combinations of letters you impose. And there's also some secrets that the developers, Wizard Foo Games, have incorporated from launch. And if you want to know what those passwords are, eh, they're easy to find online. But essentially, it is the same game, but just, you know, twerked around. So you're basically doing the typical action RPG stuff. You're going around, slashing some fools, monsters. You're trying to uncover how to get off this planet and what's going on. Where did this nano sword come from? Uh, you get a magical hat that you can throw at enemies. That's basically your boomerang. You get some bombs, a lot of disposable items. Not really puzzle heavy like Zelda. It's it's just kind of a more arcadey take on it, I suppose you could say. And on that note, it's also very, very hard. Which is probably why there's a permadeath option in the beginning of creating your world. If you just want to have a little bit of fun, put some letters and see what happens, you can do that and play until you die, and then that progress will not save. But if you actually want to beat the game, you of course can make it, you know, non-permadeath. For me, I found the game enjoyable, but like I said, it is very hard and maybe a bit too randomized for my liking for a typical uh, Zelda-like, let's say. So it may not be among the best missed games of 2017, but again, I had some fun with it. My name is Tristan, and you've been watching Reaction Examiner, where I do my best to create interesting videos to entertain and educate you fine folks. Be sure to subscribe, that helped me out a lot. And if you want to check out more, be sure to read my work over on The Gamer, where and I write fun little listicles. You can also drop by my personal website, Game Jerk, wherein I post other articles and reviews. All these links and more can be found in the description below. Thanks, and see you all next time.